Hi, my name is Mike Craig. Pedro de la Rosa. Andy Stevenson. Dan Fallows. Professor Lance. Tom McKellar. Professor Alonso here. And I'm going to be your teacher today. Every day is a school day. An average driver would really struggle to drive a thousand brake horsepower Formula One car. The grip uh, is such a peaky part of the tyres and the makeup and the acceleration of the car that they would probably spin just in a straight line. Could I cope with 1,000 horsepower under my right foot? Um, scary experience, but I would probably manage. I would really struggle to cope with a car with something like a thousand brake horsepower. I have been fortunate enough in the past to drive cars with about half of that and struggled enormously with those, so I have no idea how the drivers manage it. Hardest thing to get used to, um, I think it's just coping with the speed. I just remember the first time I drove a Formula One car was a Silverstone and everything just felt like it was coming at me so fast. One of the most difficult things on a Formula One car is just to understand what is the limit because the brakes are amazing, the engine is amazing, the grip is amazing, tires are fantastic, so it feels like it's unlimited power from that machine. Formula One cars go around the track at very, very high speeds, uh, more than 300 kph on the straights. The g-forces are very, very high, especially in the corners. When you hit the brakes, but the carbon brakes in a Formula One car, you go up to five over five Gs of deceleration. So the car under high G-forces is going through a, a huge amount of deceleration, which means every part that has mass or everything that has any, any weight to it um, is having to go from a certain speed to either a much greater speed or, or a, a much less speed. And that puts incredible strain on all of those components. So drivers in modern Formula One need to be incredibly fit. They are exposed to enormous G values in the car, which is the acceleration. So in other words, your, your multiples of your body weight are, are being experienced by you as you go around a corner um, under very violent um, accelerations and decelerations, particularly under things like braking. Their head muscles or their neck muscles have to be incredibly strong to cope with those G-forces. The biggest force acting on a Formula One car, particularly at speed, is usually what we call downforce. That is where the air is physically pushing the car into the track. The higher the speeds are, the more downforce you generate. Formula One cars have wings um, for a very similar reason to why aeroplanes have wings too. We just turn them the other way around on a Formula One car. So we're trying to push the car into the ground um, as much as we can do because that generates more grip. Um, the tyres want more vertical force on them to allow the car to go faster uh, around a corner. If we were to remove the wings, the cars would be incredibly fast in a straight line, but that's not good for racing. We've got to be quick around the corners as well, so it's always a balance between fast down the straights, fast around the corners. In theory, driving on the roof or basically uh, upside down is possible because the downforce of a Formula 1 car is very, very high, so from a certain speed you overcome the weight of the car and you could, in theory, drive upside down. So that is fairly, fairly well understood science. I think the problem is probably getting it up there in the first place. I know that there are people who have looked at actually proving it in practice. My question would be, why bother? Um, you're never going to race like that. A Formula One car is made for racing. We're not a circus act. Probably it's quite an expensive exercise to do it. That is probably why nobody has done it yet. So the strongest part of a Formula One car, by design, is the survival cell or the chassis that we, we put the driver in. Now obviously we want that to be the strongest part of the car and also the, the one that can survive the best in a, in a crash situation. With all the deformation structure around, the driver can have an incident or crash at 150 kph and walk away because the crash energy is absorbed quite a lot in the crash structure. Uh, then reducing the deceleration to levels that uh, can be sustained by the body. Crashing is never a good thing. There is this uh, yeah, um, engineering behind those cars that they are like bullet proof, you know, for any crash that uh, the cockpit area is always safe when where the driver is seated. It's still scary and it's still, you know, something that you don't want to, to experience. So the halo is a device that was introduced a few years ago, particularly to stop any objects hitting the driver themselves. So it is a, a titanium part around the cockpit that prevents uh, 
uh, intrusion of any parts or other cars onto the cockpit and to protect the driver's head. It has served miracles already in the last years. To give you an idea of how, how strong uh, a halo is, if, if you were to, to throw, difficult to imagine, but if you were to throw a London bus at a Formula One car in the direction of the driver's head, the driver would be safe. I'll be setting homework. Great work, everyone. Thanks for listening.